Pastor Joel Gutormson, and on organ we have Ruth Sheldon. And thank you to everyone who helps make possible our worship. Just a couple announcements this morning. The radio broadcast is in loving memory of Selmer and Ina, Hansi and John and Thea Larson from Harris and Leanne Hansi. We thank them for their uh, supporting of the radio ministry. At 10.30 today, we will be having the children's Christmas program. We were delayed due to weather previously. So if you want to come back and hear our Christmas program, you may do that. It will be in the chapel. I believe so. Yep. And then in your bulletin, you'll see something called uh, Epiphany House Blessing. During the season of Epiphany, which uh, began on the 6th of January, you, there is a tradition of taking the piece of chalk and marking your doorway with 20 for the thousand plus C plus M plus B plus 17. And what that stands for is C, M, and B are the initials of the three magi, Caspar, Melchor, and Bathasar. And they are also the acronym for the Latin phrase Christus Menesoium Benedicte, or Christ bless this house. So you are invited, if you have a piece of sidewalk chalk, to go home and bless your house on this day. And there is a prayer on the backside to say afterwards. But it's a Christian tradition that we've kind of fallen away from and we are taking back up. And it's a wonderful tradition, a way of blessing your home for this coming new year. I believe that's all the announcements. At this time, I invite you to stand as you are able, and we'll begin worship with the thanksgiving for baptism. <laughs> Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light and our salvation. Amen. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life, and above all we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. <laughs>
our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. To God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty Lord and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your Father, at the baptism of Jesus, you proclaimed him your beloved Son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Make all who are baptized into Christ faithful to their calling to be your daughters and sons, and empower us with your Spirit through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for the reading of the lessons. <coughs> the first reading is found in the 42nd chapter of Isaiah, beginning with the first verse. Here is my servant who I am uphold, my chosen, in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit forth upon him. He will bring justice forth to the nations. He will not cry or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break, and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice in the earth, and the coastlands wait for his teaching. Thus says God the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. 
I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison, those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to idols. See, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. We will now read Psalm 29 responsively. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory do God's name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. The Lord makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Mount Hermon like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord bursts forth in lightning flashes. The, the voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The voice shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forest bare. And in the temple of the Lord all are crying, Glory. The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forevermore. O Lord, give strength to your people. Give them, O Lord, the blessings of peace. The second reading is from the 10th chapter of Acts. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen, chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as a judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives his forgiveness of sins through his name. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Gospel according to St. Matthew, the third chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. And then John consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were open to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. It's the Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Sisters and brothers, grace and peace to you from God, our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.
Amen. I had taken the youth group to the Metropolitan D.C. Synod Youth Gathering, and we were joined with about 300 or so other 6th through 8th graders at the middle school retreat at the YMCA camp in the Shenandoah Valley and near Luray, Virginia. It's a beautiful place to bring youth up in the mountains in the fall. It's a beautiful setting. The theme that year was about baptism. And the logo on the t-shirts was this swirling circle of names that all led towards a name in the center. They were the names middle schoolers were often called by, or the labels they sometimes gave to each other. Labels like geek, jock, goth, brainiac, cheerleader, nerd, bully, gay, preppy, loser, straight troublemaker. It was a pretty long list of labels circling towards the center. And the second to the last label, close to the center, was the name Child of God. And at the very center, in the largest font, larger than all others, printed in capital letters, was the word I am. The name we know of God. And so kids could begin at the outer rim of that and like a prayer labyrinth, kind of track their way of all the names that they could be called to the one that was most important for them, that they are children of God. And then to that very center, I am. And then they could start with their identity of God and who God is. Say, I am a child of God. And pretty soon as they, that circle moved outward, some of those labels didn't really describe who they were or their true identity because we were all thought to be children of God. Now hanging out with middle schoolers is a challenge. And it becomes more challenging as I grow older, but it's always a lot of fun and gives me a lot of excitement. There's so much energy and wit bouncing off the walls as these middle schoolers come together and pass on traditions even in their own um, community at the retreat. They are passed on by either returning youth or older brothers and sisters that says when you get to the retreat this is what you have to do. And so there is always this ongoing volleyball game that happens within minutes of the registration. It just comes up. Somebody has a ball and they go to this big wall just outside the registration center and for all week that's the gathering place. And it goes on all weekend as people move in and out and who's going to be the winner of the volleyball game. And the reigning winner by the end of the retreat can claim the title of volleyball champion. And so the theme, baptism, continued to shape our weekend when we weren't out doing other things, having fun. And Friday's opening worship began with a thanksgiving for baptism, just like, kind of like what we did today. In the center of this empty room was a baptismal font. And all 300 or so youth and their guides stood against the outer wall as the leader asked certain categories of individuals to step forward to the font. And so it began, would all the youth from Northern Virginia please step forward? And about a third of the kids came forward to the font. And that was easy enough. And then all those from Maryland, please step forward to the font. And then the District of Columbia. And gradually we started to see some of the distinctions among our group. And gradually the categories became more personal and revealing and the moderator let everyone participating know that this was strictly a voluntary exercise. If there was something you weren't comfortable revealing about yourself, you were welcome not to come forward to the middle of the room. And then the leader asked, Would all those not born in the U.S. please walk towards the font? And about a third of the group stepped forward. And that surprised me a bit, because coming from the Midwest, everybody's kind of either Norwegian, Lutheran, Swedish, or German. And most of us, our ancestors were born somewhere else, but we've been here for a long time. So I was surprised 
to see that in the Metro D. Synod, C. Synod, so many people were born outside of the U.S. But it helped me understand who we are as a church. Because worship services are conducted in some 17 different languages and dialects in the Metro D.C. Synod. And it was important for me to see all the diversity as they moved to the center of the room and the baptismal font. And then the worship leader said, Now look at each other you have gathered at the font and recognize how different looking and unique you all are as you gather at the font. The ELCA has always been an immigrant church. And you are just the current generation claiming your baptismal place in the Church of America. And then he said, now turn and face those not with you in this center space. And they turned and faced all of us. And we heard, now look at your brothers and sisters in Christ and welcome them back to their places with you. And it started to dawn on me. The purpose of this exercise, as we each had a chance to claim something about our identity and realize that what made us unique with a different set of gifts and challenges and what it was that united us each to each other, it was our baptism. Then the labels became more personal and revealing. At least that was my perspective, being a white, middle-aged Norwegian Lutheran from the Midwest. If they had called that category out, I'm sure I would have been the only one in the center of the room <laughs> among those middle school, high school, middle school retreat goers from all over the world. So the moderator asked, will all children being raised by single parents, you are encouraged to walk to the font. And there were a number of them. And it was good to realize that there were wonderful kids being raised by single parents. And they learned they were not alone and should still have the same opportunities and support as everyone else who gathers in church. If you have a friend or a relative who is gay, you are welcome to come to the font. If you live with a learning disability, you are welcome to come to the font. If you or someone you know suffers from depression, thoughts of suicide or addiction, an eating disorder or poverty or homelessness, you are welcome to come to the font. And the understanding and identity of this group began to change as we come to find out who we really are as the children of God baptized and loved by the great I am. Each time a different group was asked to come forward to the baptismal font, they were told to look at those who stood among them in solidarity with them and then told to turn around and see their brothers and sisters in Christ who were there with them, who were called to pray for them and offer them support. No matter your age, your gender, your status in life, no matter where you have come from or where you think you may be going, you can enter into this community of the faithful and equally be claimed as a baptized child of God. And that's who we are as we gather in the church. Today we celebrate the baptism of our Lord Sunday. And the question some scholars have asked, and many others as well, is, well, why did Jesus need to be baptized? If baptism is for the forgiveness of sins, and John was baptizing in the River Jordan as an act of repentance, why would Jesus, who was sinless, and already in a right relationship with God, have to participate in this act of baptism? It's the question John the Baptist asks as he tries to prevent baptizing Jesus. But Jesus says, it is right for us to do this. John says, it is I who needs to be baptized by you. Why do you come to me? And for Jesus, it was necessary to show he is not isolated from the common everyday people who gather for baptism. Jesus is always with us, among us, and part of us. 
standing to claim his place in the great human family. In Matthew, this is the first public act as Jesus begins his ministry, standing in solidarity with us. And as he is baptized, the heavens are opened, not only for him, but for us as well. And the Spirit of God descends like a dove as we claim the Holy Spirit inspiring us at our baptism and calling us to live out our faith. It is at his death that we will be reminded on Good Friday how the temple curtain is torn in two. And God, like Jesus' baptism, reveals his love and his power. That he is not just far away in the heavens or contained in the innermost part of a temple. God is out in the world among God's people, helping them to claim their identity as children of God. The Spirit of God is acting like in the first act of creation, hovering over the waters and making all things new. So we too are encouraged to come to the font early and often to hear those words, to remember and affirm our baptisms, and to know most assuredly we are children of God. So after the resurrection, and Jesus' ascension into heaven, it was the disciples who took on this work of baptism and sharing the good news of the risen Christ. And as we hear today in our lesson from Acts, Peter tells the household of Cornelius this great and powerful story about how the Holy Spirit has come to them and it fills the room as all the Gentiles, we are told, and remember, the Gentiles is one of those many labels, like one of those labels we talked about earlier. The Gentiles, too, heard how God shows no partiality and how in every nation, everyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable and children of God. And the rest of this story is ours to claim our history and call as the baptized children of God, giving thanks and remembering always this gift, the gift of our baptisms, and then going out to share this gift of faith with others so they too may be claimed, sent, claimed, gathered, and sent for the sake of Christ. Amen.
us affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In our prayers today, we want to remember the family and friends of Bruce Gregor and the family and friends of James Petersburg. <laughs> Called to be a light to the nations, let us pray for God's justice, peace, and healing. Pour out your spirit of unity, triune God. Renew our lives in the promises of baptism. Hold us together in the oneness of the body of Christ. Empower us to be one as you are. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Pour out your spirit of life, eternal God. Move over polluted waters. Breathe on barren fields. Strengthen ancient cedars and oaks. Engage us in the care of sea, land, and sky. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Pour out your spirit of wisdom, holy God. Guide politicians and military officials as they wrestle with complex situations. Grant them courage and compassion to work for peace in every nation. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Pour out your spirit of justice, gracious God. Heal the pain of all who are victims of crime. Be present with all who are imprisoned. Reconcile broken relationships within communities. Comfort the sick and their caregivers, especially those we name at this time in our hearts. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Pour out your spirit of love, gracious God. Sustain all who knit prayer shawls, sew quilts, and provide housing for our neighbors who are homeless. Surround those who seek warmth and shelter with grace-filled advocates. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Pour out your spirit of peace, resurrecting God. Bring all who grieve into a community rooted in you, especially the family and friends of Bruce and James. Uphold them with your grace and keep us, gather, keep us grounded in your promise of life eternal. Hear us, O God. Receive these prayers in the name of Christ, the light of the world, who is one with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. We share that peace. Peace of the Lord. Peace of the Lord. And peace. 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 We continue our worship with our offerings.
Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love. Through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The God of glory dwell in you richly, name you beloved, and shine brightly on your path. And the blessings of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Christ. Thanks be to God.